Hi, my name is Alex Dolphin and welcome back to another episode of Ex Ante. Today we're going to discuss the case of Vaughn vs. Menlove. This case is heard in the Court of Common Pleas in England in the year of 1837. Let's go ahead and jump into the facts of the case. So the plaintiff uh, was an owner of some cottages. These cottages got burnt down and the start of the fire was a misstacked, you know, stack of hay. It was stacked too tight, it was a fire hazard, and it was stacked too close to the plaintiff's cottages. So the cottages caught on fire. He lost that, all his damages. Um, he's really frustrated. So he brought suit against the person who stacked the hay. And that's the defendant in this case. Um, he said that the defendant had acted negligent in stacking this hay the way that he did. And he also brought into evidence um, the fact that he told the defendant multiple times that, hey, like, man, the way you're stacking this hay next to my cottages is not okay. You're gonna burn down my cottages. You gotta fix this stack of hay. Uh, the defendant, um, like I, I can kind of sympathize with, you know, not always are we taking the most proactive, um, you know, cautions, especially when it comes to things that are annoying, like stacks of hay. Um, he didn't really do anything. So eventually that stack of hay did catch fire, like the plaintiff told him it would, uh, and his cottages burned down. So you can imagine the frustration of the plaintiff. I mean, if you own these cottages, you knew this, uh, the, the, the stack of hay was going to be a complete and utter fire hazard for weeks at a time and you've been warning this dude about it and you're like hey man my cottages are going to catch on fire I mean, he doesn't do anything you'd be really frustrated so that's what he was he brought suit um the court uh in this case it's so key because they begin to discuss the standard of a reasonably prudent man which now we call a reasonably prudent person um and a reasonably prudent person what would a reasonably prudent person do in the case of negligence. And so that's what the court is discussing. Uh, ultimately, they say the defendant didn't act as a reasonably prudent person. A reasonably prudent person wouldn't have allowed this stack of hay to get so out of control and such a fire hazard that it burnt down his neighbor's cottages. Um, and even if the reasonably prudent person didn't see this as a danger themselves when they were warned about it from the neighbor multiple times, um, a reasonably prudent person would have you know, disperse this stack of hay, fixed it, made it much less of a fire hazard, move it out into a field further from uh, some cottages. So that's the case, pretty simple. The key here is that the, the justice develops the, the standard of a reasonably prudent person. Um, and that's a duty in, in negligence and tort law that we have as individuals to others is to act as a reasonably prudent person was and with that level of care um, to other people. Um, so you'll see this case cited back to just because it was where the standard was first developed. Uh, so that's the case. Uh, some ex ante implications, some things to think about with a reasonably prudent person. Um, first, it's, it's, a, it's an objective standard, but is it really? Um, it's kind of a subjective standard because each individual has to decide what a reasonably prudent person would do. And most everyone thinks they're a reasonably prudent person. Uh, so juries and judges and people that are looking at cases are just going to you know, naturally say, what, what would I have done? I'm the reasonably prudent person. I'm reasonably prudent. Um, but what truly is a reasonably prudent person? And if it's an objective standard, maybe we should have it a little bit more defined um, than just this blanket uh, bill. So that's one critique uh, uh, of the formula. Um, it is good because it, it at least tries to get people out of their own bodies and into the, the hive mind of the reasonably prudent person rather than you know stuck in their own point of view. It, it does try to do that. I'm not sure it does that successful of a job um, at doing that. Um, another key with like the reasonably prudent person and something to just really think about is how heavily hindsight bias uh, influences tort law and negligence law. Um, you know, had this stack of hay never caught on fire, uh, we might not have said anything of the defendant in this case. We might not have said he was, you know, imprudent at all. Uh, but because it did catch on fire, he was imprudent. Um, and, and it's so many times that in tort law, you're going to see something crazy go on. And then the jury and the judge are left to deliberate it. And they say, well, a reasonably prudent person would have avoided that. But it's like, you know, if you really were in that person's shoes, um, did you really have any reason to, to suspect that this bale of hay was gonna catch on fire. It's just hay, right? Um, and he likely did in this case, but I think it's just a principle that you can look at throughout tort law and just see how the hindsight bias, that psychological factor does influence so many juries and so many judges um, to rule certain ways, uh, even though you know the, the defendants might not have really had much reason to foresee something uh, bad happen in a 
reasonably prudent person probably wouldn't have done um, anything different. I mean, that's not all cases, but just something to think about is how hindsight bias influences tort law. So that's the video. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this, this, uh, this episode. If you'd like to see more, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and I'll talk to you later. Bye.